Welcome to this episode of Culture of Paint. Uh, tonight, we're going to take a look at what's caught our eye over the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For our main topic, we're going to look at the importance of basing in a finished paint job. And then we'll close out the show, as usual, taking some questions from the live Patreon chat and looking at what all our hashtag paint cultists have been up to. Culture of Paint is aimed at a mature audience, and we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. Let's talk about paint. Good evening, everyone. I think we are up and running. Have we got the chat in there? We have got the chat in there. I'm Henry. I'm joined as usual by Andy, Rich, and Matt. Me. And we're going to regale you with wonderful anecdotes and facts about painting tiny people. <laughs> um, how is everyone this evening? We all good? Very well. Good, yeah, not bad. It's very Lovely springy evenings, out. Evenings, it is. I was just about to say, it's getting lighter. It's getting warmer. Mm. We're doing this in the daylight soon, and it will be joyous. I don't Complain know. about the heat. <laughs> get, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. It's it's we, even, even on the wet palette, it's, uh, it's starting to dry out. Need to get a chill palette. Uh, we've got the... Uh, we got yeah, chill back. We got who we got in Bert Macklin, FBI in the chat there. Stefan, Liam, Dan, Will. That's lovely. So hopefully you guys will be firing some questions at us. Uh, as usual, all our patrons get access to watch this show live uh, and interact with us, um, and haven't tried to derail us too badly yet, which is nice. We can um, choose before, to ignore you know, them. <laughs> that's true. Or just completely forget to have a look at the chat. But we're getting better. We're getting better than that. <laughs> um, okay, enough waffle. Let's get on with what has caught our eye over the last couple of weeks since we recorded uh, out there in the miniatures world. So who is up first? So, Let's have a slide, Matt. First up. Oh, it's me. Fantastic. Um, this is actually one of my what? hobby chums, Toby. Uh, on Instagram, he's bad user name tag. Uh, Toby's uh, just a he's a, an artist first and foremost um, and he's just a, a f I love his hobby absolutely love his hobby and he's only really recently started really using Instagram to share stuff um, but I remember like seeing some of his armies when I've been down the club um, and stuff and it's, it's just pretty ridiculous um, so if you are fans of the old Slaves to Darkness books and all your weird and wonderful Lovecraftian nonsense and geodesic weirdness. Uh, it's all over uh, his his Instagram. He's, he's working on a... He's just finished a 40k Chaos project, and now he's working on a Age of Sigmar Chaos project. Um, but I think what, what always gets me with people like this is, you know how we talk about you can... If you do the basics and you practice and you watch your tutorials and you take tuition... You can become a really good painter, right? A good hobbyist. You, you can produce really nice looking stuff. But there's that couple of percent at the top of people that just have ideas and then are able to put mm. them into model form. Um, and I, I just think it's awesome, like being able to have that, that vision in your mind and then execute it. Um, I think I gave you another slide of this yeah. time, Matt, to sort of give you an idea. And he, he paints in that quite blanche mm -hmm. style. Um, he's done this whole freaky chaos army. Um, it's just, yeah, if you dig this kind of stuff, which I really do, uh, I think, Rich, you're quite keen on a bit of this oddness as well, aren't you? Um, it looks very much like Silent Hill. It's, uh, oh, dude, there's some, it looks some terrifying. really creepy stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to want to weird yourself out a little bit, go check him out on Instagram. Um, as I did with the last show, guys, I will put links to everyone's social media that we mentioned uh, or you know links to companies or whoever that we we bring up and stuff um actually some pretty cool basing on that model too which we'll um mm. we'll probably touch on a little bit later on but yeah that's my pick um go and check them out if you like your weirdness it's very it's awesome choice it's very creepy <laughs> but i like it yeah. you missed the opportunity to call him an ideas man though <laughs> it's an ideas man he's an ideas man, man. i can't wait till <laughs> we can go back to oz and just watch that on repeat on the 37 hour flight we're referencing the film the castle for those yeah. who are going what are you on about it's an excellent film australia's finest and uh we won't go on too much of a tangent about that but it's great <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's 
yeah, it's phenomenal, phenomenal film. Tell him he's dreaming. Right, what's up next, Matt? Up next, it's mine. Oh, right. This is amazing. Yes. <laughs> what is it? Where is it from? How do I buy one? I can't. I can't find the manufacturer. I, I, it wasn't like listed anywhere, so I'm gonna have to find it. But it's just so cool. It's like a like a mallard dressed up as a chaplain. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's, it's. I just saw it. And it was brilliant. Um, it's not Fausto's company, is it? His own company. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, possibly, but um. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely find a link to it and put it down in the description. But I just he has his own uh, his own miniature line called Abyssal, which is cool. Uh, and I think he does box arts for companies, so it could be either one of those. But it is mental. <laughs> it's just we'll have a dig and make sure we find it. Yeah, it's just so unique. I've never seen something quite like it. It's um. Do you do you guys remember the books when we were kids by Brian Jacks? They were Red called Wall. The Red Wall. Yeah. 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 That's the first thing that popped into my head. I was like, it, there's basically they've got like badgers and ferrets who like have swords and armor and stuff. And it just like that's my, the first yeah. thing I thought of. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, it was uh, just I just saw it when I was scrolling through Instagram and I was like, that that is my pick instantly. It was just so damn yeah. cool. But yeah, that's mine. Nice. Ooh. And <laughs> um the red wall is funny i was gonna i was thinking of bringing up some models as a sort of pick of the week but there hadn't been anything new as of yet but you talk about red wall there uh rich and i think for, for a lot of people of our, our age it was like a huge series of books man like as a, yeah. as a kid there's a there's a show in the uk uh, in england called salute every year big huge trade show and competition and, and, and all the rest of it and it's a fantastic place to find like small miniatures manufacturers. And there's a, a miniatures manufacturer called Oathsworn and a, a company uh, that make a game called Burrows and Badgers, um, which is what I just got up to grab. And it's it's kind of a, a skirmish game that kind of like Red Bull. So it's all just full of like toads and rats and weasels and you know all these all these anthropomorphic. Um, you love your critters. Characters. I love critters, man. But it's if you like that really sort of that quite sweet, you know, single piece metal miniatures, you know, um, it, it's it's well worth checking out. Uh, Oathsworn. I'll, I'll I'll put the link in there. But that's what I thought of when I saw this uh, this thing of yours, Matt. And I was like, that's like the sort of. I guess you know how we we consider large scale miniatures sort of superior in a lot of ways to a a twenty eight mil gaming mm. model. Um, this is kind of like that. Yeah. I had no idea. Like I know obviously um, Alan does quite. Alan Carrasco sculpts quite a lot of anthropomorphic stuff, doesn't he? Um, was it was it Alan who did those Triceratops a while back? Yeah, yeah. So like I knew he did the weird stuff, but I had no idea other companies were um, were were in on it. Um, yeah. it's, it's so cool <laughs> yeah there's, um, it's just like uh, it's just for, for me it's like a mallard a, the duck the mallard dressed up as a like a preacher or a chaplain or, or like a templar or something it's just epic yeah. it's just for a battle. <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grand marshal or whatever uh, Craig in the chat's just saying there's a board game called Root uh, like as in tree root that's really good for this type of like, anthropomorphic type thing as well trees uh, mm. so yeah <laughs> um, but yeah i'm well keen on that i'm gonna go and have a look uh see what else there is like it so next up what else do I... who have we got up next let's have a look Me. oh this must be rich <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know, no surprises me. there yeah <laughs> um yeah this is my pick of the week uh by nicholas Philstrom. I really like Nicholas's work anyway. Uh, and just of late, I've been really into my sort of sci-fi in the last couple of weeks. I watched a film and then it kind of triggered a whole, oh, sci-fi is amazing. So I've been kind of delving back into that kind of thing. And this popped up on my feed and I just think it's amazing. Who doesn't like a robot? Robots are cool as fuck. Yeah. But the quality and the, the sculpting, I know it's not masses of sculpting and it's just tying all the bits together um but it's done really well it's really clever use of the bits um 
you know, it's a race guard with space marine feet uh, and a little just, I don't know what the head is made out of, but um, I thought it was amazing. The second I saw it, I was like, God, I'll give me, I, was, I literally just went, give me a, a robot. I want to paint a robot right now, just because I saw that, which I then proceeded to go and do. Um, standard. <laughs> standard, standard me. But yeah, I just loved it. Thought it was quality. So sci-fi. It's just so awesome. It is really, really good, isn't it? And there's no attempt there to make it um, fit in the sort of 40k universe, right? No, nah, it's, it's just, just a thing, yeah. right? Mm. I like that yeah. a lot. The green yeah. stuff works really, really good as well. Like it's really hard yeah. to do those like geometric shapes and get them smooth. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, mm. definitely. Very cool. Definitely. Well, want to see it with some paint on it now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, eh? Um, someone was asking they'd say they'd like quite like to see an episode where we talk like just about conversions um, or, or kit will. bashing so i think that could be a be a fun one um, but I, I know certainly yeah you see some incredible like very good hobby mate of mine trev doesn't really enjoy his painting but adores kit bashing and and sort of yeah. get a, you know, getting it done like that well that's a so, great segue isn't it matt it is <laughs> <laughs> Because what have I got? You have two seconds. I'm just going to swap something just so it goes right. Uh, Look at this behind the curtain. Tech on the fly. There we go. Barry's. Nice. Nice. Very nice. How no. cool is that? Where's my t-shirt? Oh, I've moved it. I know. Oh, my t-shirt's <laughs> on the other side of the room now. I've had a, had a rejig in the studio. I'm going to get it up on the wall. It's just insane, so, isn't it? That's Asmodai, right? That's the Mark yeah. Gibbons Asmodai artwork, right? Yep. That's... How good is that? Fantastic. So this is uh, Barry, a.k.a. And Farius, is that how you say his, uh, his Instagram? I believe so, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, segues in nicely because he's known for his awesome conversion work. And uh, this one was special because I love Dark Angels characters. I like Dark Angels. Correct. But I particularly like their characters um they stand out to me i think once i said if i could have any new character made it would be uh as real oh yeah and uh yeah as eq as modi if those three were all new and plastic that would be me a very happy boy but luckily for the meantime we have barry does these uh awesome conversions and i think this one's really special and uh it's I really love seeing the green work without any paint on. Like, it's just really cool, isn't it? Seeing, like, super crisp uh, work like that. So, yeah, it's just really enjoyable. And I'm sure lots of people love this old character. So He's done some great, like, step-by-steps, hasn't he, on the yeah. Instagram page? Yeah, You see just the, the patience that's required. What a page to follow. I think it's a, mm. a must if you like your classic marine characters, because you'll see That's, many of them. That sword blade is mental, how neat and straight <laughs> it is. It might be green stuff over the top, though. Yeah, I think it is the sword yeah. blade. Even still. So I did an interview with, with Barry, a uh, text interview, like one of those old school white door things, and most of the time it's just green stuff. Yeah. He's, he's mm. just using green stuff. He just lets, the, lets it set enough to actually... Um, like so it's got resistance, yeah. right? So it's not like that super tacky bit where it starts off originally. And that looks like a mix anyway, doesn't it? That lighter green looks like yeah. your, your milliput mix, yeah, doesn't it? a bit of Filmo or something. Mm. Well, we'll have to get him on on our conversion. Spec. He's on the list. He's on the list, don't worry. I think, <laughs> I think you're going to be seeing a lot of his stuff in, in GD <laughs> next year. <laughs> I think he's got a, a few commissions on for quite a few painters. Um, nice. That hasn't come out into the open yet. Keep them secret and all that. But uh, That's yeah, exciting. I think you're going to see a lot of them at, uh, at the next GD, which is really cool. cool. It's uh, that is yeah. Hopefully we get one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Great yeah. Pick. But yeah, that's sweet. So there were two more uh, things I wanted to just bring up in this section um, before we move on to the next slide. Is something that only happened today or last night. I can't remember when I read it. Um, it's uh, 
I guess it's slightly well. It is sad news, but be, be positive about it and be you know happy for what we got from them. Um, there was a miniatures company called Nordlys, N O R D L Y S, who've produced some really cool uh, larger scale minis over the last 12, 12 to eighteen months ish, something like that. Um, I know their their first relief, the the first wave. Me and Andy were absolutely mad for. Um, I haven't. I didn't even say to Matt for this, so we haven't unfortunately got a slide or anything, but I will link to them uh, into the chat. But the guys uh, decided to sort of call call it a day. I sort of had a lot of fun doing it, but found it's a bit uh, a bit much to sort of con continue it on. But um, just wanted to say to Jacob and, and Mads, the guys who, who created it, like it was a... Uh, I, I know for us as cult of painters and as miniatures producers, we... We loved what they did, and we loved how they presented themselves, and and just just all of it was just really really cool. So um, if you get a chance, I'll put the link down. Go and check out uh, what they got, and if there is anything left uh, on for sale from those guys, I would really recommend picking some of it up because there's some some really nice minis in there. Um, so yeah, I hope you don't mind me just bringing that one up, chaps. Just noticed it, it is, earlier. It's so hard, isn't it? Being uh, and we we know that it's just <laughs> hard. Are being a miniatures uh, manufacturer, and there's been quite a few gone under um, for yeah. various reasons. But if you see a brand you like, then support them because it's mm. normally one or two guys, and they're just trying to yeah, make a few models. It's super expensive to do. Um, when you see like models that are doing small runs, like a hundred copies, they're pretty much not really making a profit. So mm. if you if you do like what they do, then just then just just buy it support them yeah. even if even if it goes in your pile of shame it's better than uh, <laughs> oh what, pile of what shame. did i hear someone refer to that as this week on twitter it was my as my cabinet of ambition <laughs> nice that's more positive yeah you know, way more positive it's a glass half full we got yeah we gotta start calling it that i'm gonna take that, that and run one. with it um so yes yeah, so, so back on to uh, the other end of the spectrum from a small manufacturer to the biggest manufacturer uh, the great big GW elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, this incredible model just was shown. Was it yesterday? Was it last night? Yeah. And it's Very Monday. Recently. It yeah. is. Monday. I mean, this this Wama Quest release they're doing is is going from strength to strength. I've, as a fan of John Blanche's artwork and concept work, I, I just. It's just perfect, this model. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, fight me. <laughs> what um, I love about this one is it looks like an entry to Golden Demon mm. from a quite, you know, someone someone like your, your pick earlier has got, like, great ideas and they've come up with this unusual thing. Reminds me of um, uh, David, who's now a sculptor for Games Workshop. His mm. sort of entries... Mm. In France in the in the early 2000s because he always scratch built things like dwarves and things like that um and it's really grim dark and and even the paint job feels different that so stood out yeah a lot really that's not a typical heavy metal paint job right yeah yeah it just it just feels like an, a golden demon entry and a super yeah. like a one-off vampire that someone sculpted mm. and it's not it doesn't feel like a gw sculpt in mm. a good way yeah. not because what do is bad but that they can diversify and, and they're they're capable of so much more than uh, than people think. So yeah, you could see someone who's not a GW fan, and and I, I almost feel you tend to have GW fans and sort of anti GW people. There does there's not sort of people who don't care, right? You I could see anti ones enjoying this model, picking this model up and painting it. Yeah, agree. I um, love yeah. I love the fact that it's like. Yeah, she's a vampire, but it's all about her clothing. Like she's got a sword because they all have weapons. But you know, so many of the AOS or fantasy range of models that I tend to find there's lots about lots of the armor and the swords and shields and that kind of thing. I love the fact that she's just a vampire. She's got a little mask and she's got a sword. And the size of the base, mm. they, they've, they've obviously someone's designed it and drawn comes up with this great long cloak. And rather than trying to put it around her or squish it down onto like a smaller base, mm. they've just kind of gone, fuck it, we'll put it on a big one so you get the full effect. Yeah. It's straight out of a concept, yeah. isn't it? It's, yeah. it's like, it is, exactly. It's like when people who enjoy the, like Black Library fiction and stuff, often you'll find 
people will say their favorite books are those ones that focus on stuff away from the battlefield mm. um and this is this feels like um a board game piece or or something you know like a like a kingdom death type model or something like that not okay. a you know it, it's you know not not a charging across the the table type model um what a range oh it's what a range pretty, that's turning into now pretty silly eh? yeah, yeah. Pretty silly. Uh, into an elf okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's already got pointy ears yeah it's true it's true um lovely so i think that's uh, all the slides for the bits that have caught our mm-hmm. eye this last week um how are we going oh dan in the chat's just saying after we did the tutorial on bullsaurus so that tutorial you did andy a few weeks ago now there he um, is. he's plucked up his courage to order his first spira mirabilist sculpt oh he got this master splinter one mm, that should have been on the uh, slides at some point actually as well we'll have, um, a, we'll have a whole day about him one day i reckon we will most certainly <laughs> um right you're up bud whoever picked meme of the week wasn't me this week so. I think it was me. <laughs> it was Matt. Drum roll. So saw this and I just went, oh, it's so true. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's it's yeah. sad because it's true. The truth <laughs> hurts. True. The yeah. truth yeah. It really does. So I, everything I love is... it. Like, oh, man. Getting that little quick zenithal white over your primer. On any model, it. you're like, oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'll yeah. leave it there. Yeah, you know, this will be a game changer. This one, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be anti on this one, and then yeah, it looks like a melted pancake. <laughs> yeah. Imagine doing that at one of Barry's minis. Where you can... <laughs> well, that's um, well, I can't remember who it was. One of the guys that he commissioned, he put up a uh, like a story or a post or whatever it is. He's saying because uh, he got the commission from Barry and started painting it. And I think he screwed it up. And he was just like, "How? What's the best way to take paint off of green stuff?" Nope. And I just went, "Don't, don't do it. Just leave Get it. Another commission. Just, just, <laughs> it's, it's gone. It's too late. Anything you do to it will melt the green stuff." Oh, that's so they're, sad. They're, they're doing one offs. You know, guys think it's terrifying. Yeah. Like, what if I? What if I cock this up? Yeah. Like I'm out. I if get I'm that out. enough if the models cost me like twenty quid. Yeah. <laughs> It's, true. You know, it's, it's, true. More, more, it's almost less the money, especially if it's one of these friggin' thousand piece, you know, models that we're getting nowadays. I ain't building that again. Like, oh, I could build that again. Yeah. 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 I've already ruined three of them with plastic glue. I'm not gonna have to try and do it again. I can't get past the pla- plastic glue stage. Every model's ruined with ruined. plastic glue. <laughs> Utterly ruined. I think um, it's um yeah. what was it? Because it's a lot easier now to sort of undo stuff with simple uh, with biostrip even. Yeah. It's yeah. it's kind of the the cure all for your hobby woes if you've really yeah like Too screwed easy it to up. It. But what pro- does Ben call it? Wardle varnish, I think. <laughs> yeah. But Giving it a wardle varnish. I find I find though that now that I know that I have like a way to undo stuff, I'm constantly undoing stuff. Oh, which really? is bad. Yeah, which is cause I spent the Don't do it. I spent the entire of last year taking more paint off than I put on. It was <laughs> it was the worst. I didn't paint a single model last year because I kept taking the paint off it. it the was... only stuff I strip now is if it's an out of production model. So like I can't get another one. Um, gen- generally, that's it now. Ev- everything else, I'm at the point now where I just buy a new one. All um, right, money bag. You know, <laughs> no, but it's not like it's, it's you know it's it's. <laughs> I know yeah, I know it does sound a bit like that, but it's not like you're doing it with every model, right? But there is no, there is Andy this does. point, you know, like. <laughs> strip it and, and start again it's just how much is your time worth and they're never as nice even when you get bio strip i use methylated spirits like it's never quite as nice right as it was hey stop it's putting just, me off all right, right. Just, it's just just hassle you know but you know i mainly paint space marines anyway so it doesn't matter yeah i, um, I don't really strip anything uh, they can't to be them. honest i often just paint straight over it as well like especially yeah, like it? you know if if i've not say done too much oil work or something like that on it just don't yeah. spray just, just just crack on you know all the layers are so thin anyway right i think it's that whole trying to push that finish not perfect i yes, think 100 we need uh, to keep, yeah, we need to keep banging on about that and actually complete your miniatures and 
have the have, have the cabinet of ambition finished. <laughs> <laughs> it means you can get new ones then, right? Yeah. Too late. Lovely stuff. That, right, before that, we go down that stripping rabbit hole, let's uh let's crack on with the main That sounds great. A stripping rabbit. <laughs> yeah. <There's laughs> some... <laughs> well that's what that episode of uh, Winnie the Pooh was, wasn't it? When he was stuck with his ass out of Rabbit's uh, <laughs> Rabbit's house, wasn't it? <laughs> um right. Without any pants on. So main topic of tonight. Um we've had a few people bring it up recently, but it's also a question we get asked a lot. It, it's to do with basing miniatures, um, how we go about it, what products we like, um, how do we get our ideas, what types, you know, what styles do we like and stuff. So I thought for this episode, it might be fun to take quite a broad view of basing for gaming miniatures and basing for display miniatures. And I thought I'd just go through sort of what I felt were the key areas of each of those and ask you guys and the chat your experiences with with all of them and then hopefully from that we might find one or two nuggets in there that will go back to these rabbit holes and we can look at in future episodes um there's certainly one i want to get there's a, a good mate of ours mike's probably in the chat actually he is there um he's been started creating his own bases now sculpting and casting his own bases and that's certainly something i'd like to to talk about a lot more in a future episode. Um, but uh, I think we'll probably kick off with that as well, actually, the idea of sculpted bases. But before we talk about those topics, guys, what's why is basing so important? What What is it, you know, when you see a great model on a lazy base, or a, and I will call it lazy because I've done it lazily and rich. I know you admit that sometimes you just bang some pigments on because you can't be asked. Mm -hmm. um, what, why is basing so important so it was talk about from an army point of view rich why does it to you why does basing matter and why do you put the effort in or not put the effort in sometimes i think when it comes to armies it's it's there's various ways to look at it so if i'm play, painting an army say i'm painting an army i just want to play with it i want to get it done quite quickly and i want it to look cool come from two feet away i will pick the brightest powder you can possibly imagine and I will bang it on the base as much as I can get on there to, and seal it in. Because from two feet away, you won't necessarily see as much of the detail as you would if you're picking the miniature up. So I want a cohesive color that will tie the whole army together um, and make it look cool. If I'm doing an army, an army to play with, that's all I'm after. Mm. So the thought but, that goes into it is the, the color, and that's it, right? The color. Yeah. As long as the colour balances out well with the miniatures that you've painted it, you don't want it to be too much of a contrast or to take away from the models too much. I don't want it to be the the really the overriding colour, but it's got to complement it. Um, so, for instance, if I'm doing a quite a dark army, so uh, Iron Hands, Martian Red base, mm -hmm. because it brings some colour to a dark miniature. If you had Iron Hands, which are black, and then you had them on black gravel or a grey base, it it might look quite cool as a like as a as an army, but I, for me personally that would be too flat from too far away if you're two feet yeah. away then you're not going to see the difference 100 percent, man 100 percent. i did a an army a few years back and i went around some friend's house and we played a load of zone mortalis and these models when i was photographing them and looking at them on the computer and, and looking at them on the shelf they look really cool really gritty yeah. it worked then we put them on the zone mortalis board in the dining room you know with a normal light above us and i may as well have not bothered doing anything yeah because it just they just blended into nothingness, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's particularly challenging if you like the more uh, quote unquote natural looking stuff. So that military modeling style, you know, imperial yeah. armor books. It, 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 and I, I I started and aborted a Dark Angels project um, in the last few months, and one of the things that that killed it for me was I just couldn't make them look interesting enough from that three foot. Yeah. Um, we, and and retain the subtlety that I enjoyed yeah. about them. You know, I, I didn't want to slap bright. You know, people often go and I know this winds Andy up. People often go, oh, you need more contrast, more contrast. That's not always the case. Right. Yeah. There's more isn't always, always better with that. But, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll bang on. Yeah. Bang on so with that one. when you come to something like that, so for instance, if I was ever going to do a Krieg army, Krieg for me are almost quite realistic within a very unrealistic mm. world. It's all dark colors, muted. So the base has to kind of add to that. It depends also with like on the miniatures that you're picking. So Krieg for me is dark and 
mucky, it's trenches. So the bases reflect that. Mm. Whereas, for instance, if it's Eldar, I would think of forests or anything lush and green. I think you can lean towards, when you're not thinking about just how it looks, if you're thinking of the narrative of your army or the fluff that you've come up with for your own army, the base massively lends towards that. So mm. I've got an orc army that I'm doing that's bright red. The bases are bright as well, but they're sandy and deserty, and that's the theme throughout the whole army. So I think bases, are, they're massively important. They can tell a hell of a lot about the story of an army or a group of models or warband, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and they can really kind of cement it in a, in a, in an environment. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They are, they're, 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 they're your way, aren't they? Of, of yeah. showcasing that miniature. They're their own tiny little diorama, you know, that you can yeah. put them on. Um, yeah. So complete other end of the scale. Um, Andy display models. Um, I'm sure you won't mind me saying this because I know you've told it to other people. You've actually had experience, right, where you entered a model into a competition and it was the basing that let you down, right? Uh, I'm trying to remember what that was. <laughs> well, this is, I don't want to be naughty in case you didn't want to say it. There was a few years ago, you'd entered a, a fantasy golden demon and you'd entered uh, a model. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And uh, I believe the sort of feedback was, the, the base is not to the same level as the miniature and you were like that's 100 percent correct um, yeah, around the time and stuff and i know you said for you it was quite a big watershed moment in your painting for competition right it was no cut no corners anywhere yeah not really yeah. the basing but like um yeah definitely don't cut any corners because they'll see them but i rushed elements of the mod it was uh Alaria actually and uh, I rushed the wings and the base and I did a, a really nice job of the skin and well, I had like OSL and all that stuff on it but then the the wings and the base were kind of a tabletop level to be honest and uh, just dropped the whole thing um, but yeah I think that with gaming models and uh, competition models that the base is everything because it just puts um the model in an environment and it tells so much about the model without you having to read any any mm. backstory and for someone who doesn't read any backstory um <laughs> then that's really cool um and actually well going back to the gaming stuff the two aos armies i've done the basing's been kind of one of my favorite elements so with my, my silver neff and uh and my lumineff it was an amazing uh, experience doing the basing because I hunted for the right products and um, for the, the Sylvan F it was a like a woodland uh, product I used for like uh, muddy ground and you just glue it on and it looks incredible mm. and for the Lumen F I found um, some grass tufts that are so natural that you just stick as many of them as you can fit on the base and it looks incredible and um it's not any effort. So I think the base is an opportunity to, for gaming stuff to make your models look a miles better without much effort. Mm -hmm. And then on the other spectrum, like you said, is that you can make your display models look incredible with a lot of effort, yeah. um, but it can, it can make the model. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something that I've tried really hard on in 2020. I was going to mm -hmm. say this year, last 12 months and uh, something I really really enjoy i've got to say yeah i think it shows mate I, I you know it's certainly having watched you know the time i've known you obviously your painting obviously is good and getting better and better but basing really starting to stand out you know this is a handful of models of yours that immediately spring to my mind when i think of cool bases for big models you know the orc with the crab on the beach straight oh, away yeah. that's cool and the the, the dust the, the dusted donut Day of God, Samurai, Snow Base, you know. You can um, see the snow from here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute belter. Um, right, let's get the first slides up, Matt, and have a look. So the first thing I want to the first thing we'll chat about is gaming armies. And the first thing I wanted to chat about within them was all these sculpted bases that you've got out here now. Um, you've obviously got the uh, companies producing resin sculpted bases. Uh, this is Unreal Wargaming Studios at the top. Uh, and then you've got GW obviously doing their own quite a broad range now of plastic sculpted bases. 
right? Where do you guys sit within this? I know my opinions on it, but particularly with the more involved resin bases, how are you feeling, Rich? Is it something you'd use? Yeah, I've got some of the Unreal Wargaming uh, bases. I really like them. They've got great quality to them. Um, I would use them, yeah. I mean, when you think about a project, if it, for me it would have to factor in, it'd be something that I really wanted to, to do um, as part of the sort of story to it because obviously there is one part of it is the cost. So there is a cost obviously to using resin bases that's, mm. that will put, if you're doing a 2,000 point army, there's a considerable cost to doing an army that size anyway and then adding resin bases of all sizes to that will up it by quite a lot. So that's mm. always something to consider. But mm. For me, just adding that level of, of immersion, of creating a, un, a unified like scenario for your models, I think it's, a, it's, it's really good. The quality of them now, even like when I think back to when I kind of when they first started popping up in the hobby, remember you'd get like the, rather than the entire base, it would just be like a cap that you would stick on top of mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. GW base. Um, they were good, but the level that they're at now and like the different, even different like depths that you can get, I think for, for armies look great. They're not for every army, I don't think. I don't think every army should use one or it would look quite as good with all of them. I think it massively depends on the army itself. I think things like Warbands, they're brilliant. If you're mm. playing Necromunda or you're playing a skirmish-based sci-fi or fantasy uh, game, I think they're, they're a really, really good thing to use. I think you don't need to necessarily use them for everything, but if you want that level of narrative um, storytelling, I think they're a great tool. Yeah, man. I had thought, actually, that... I only really associate them with sci-fi stuff. Yeah. I can't really think of... Uh, There's some nice ones that you can get that are like cobbled stone. So if you were going to play... Oh, like of course. Time, yes, yes. So like course. cobbled basings yeah. or like yeah. um, little wooden walkways, that kind of thing. Yeah. Actually, those, you know, you talked about those toppers. Um, yeah. Do you remember the, the bases that are that have like a recess in them? So they have a, a much yeah. shallower bevel, uh, yeah. or much more curved bevel rather. Um, and then they have a recess. They look lovely when you drop in a little cobble, cobblestone yeah. or whatever for like a D&D &D warband or something. Yeah, really, really yeah. nice. Really, really nice. Um, but yeah, I think the plastic, I was surprised. I wasn't a fan when we first saw them, um, the GTA plastic spaces. And then they dropped the Zone Mortalis ones and the, and the Mechanicus ones. They were sharper though, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think the majority of my stuff will be certainly even if I just use it as a starting point, which I then add yeah. rubble and, and and whatever on over it. I, I yeah. can't see me doing many armies where they aren't the starting point. Um, uh, and I agree as well. Like they don't have to be one thing that I test that, which I thought worked quite well is they don't have to be every base. So for instance, if you think of like a oh, ruined right. city, there'll be some areas of the ruined city where it is just rubble or it was just sand or mud or the difference in the textures would, mm. would be there. So, like, I've, in my Blood Angels army, I've got some that are on literally just the bare metal, like metal ones like that, uh, sculpted ones like that, the GW ones. I've got somewhere I've added some stuff to it, and then somewhere I've just completely gone the other way and just used like milliput with sand or that kind of thing. And mm. if you know, as long as the painting, the the colours used tie it all in, it works really well. Yeah, yeah, big time. So, if you don't want the sculpted ones, and you're going to make it yourself. Yep. what's out there so matt what's the next slide bud i hope it's what i think it is yes right um whilst we're on the molded base thing i just wanted to talk about these uh name nameplate things um so this is from versatile terrain these nameplates came on the scene a couple of years ago now i think um, and as you were saying particularly when you're looking at a skirmish type game so whether that's necromunda blood bowl um War, you know, War Machine's probably a bit too large, maybe. I don't know. But your, 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 your skirmish level type games, I think they're absolutely fantastic for. I, of course, consider Titanic as a skirmish level game because you only need <laughs> about five models. And I've used them on all my Titans, as you see here. Um, love. And this, I wanted to use this frame just because it's a sort of segue into the next idea. of I didn't want to use... I've seen some really nice moulded bases for Titanicus, but... Uh, there's something within me that likes creating something you know um so this one was very much right i want to do it myself but it needs it's for gaming i don't want to take forever but i'm always guilty of finishing a paint job and i'm already rushing towards the end of it anyway because i'm bored 
<laughs> and then the bass thing's like, oh, God, what are we going to do now? And whatever. So this was sort of, for me, a really nice compromise. Um, and for this, I just used the Vallejo texture paint, um, which all, all the companies do, right? GW, Vallejo, AK, whoever. Um, but I, I just, it's the, the I, what are those Russian mud on this? It's just brilliant. Mm. um like and the d the g dub texture paints were fine right i used a few of them and i was like okay i get it these are helpful but the vallejo stuff is a step up mm. in my opinion um the variety of texture you can get within it and it's an adhesive so i just got a, a load of like spare bits and bobs like those cables and stuff and you just press it into the press it into the basing stuff and obviously it nice sinks in nicely looks like yeah. it's meant to be there and then the 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 basing things that uh, you know um makes it adhere to the uh, adhere to the base and then you can paint over the top of it so in this case we're going to talk about paints and pigments later but this was a case of i used oil paints and pigments over the top of it to to create my own base kind of thing but are you guys like where do you stand on that it, it, now we talked about molded bases you know gun to your head can only do these bases for the rest of your models forever are you going to go with molded or are you going to go with make your own make your own yeah make your make own, your own. Mm, mm. big okay can okay. got time to kill clearly um just throw molded bases at me i'll be fine with that um, <laughs> i suppose it kind of lovely. depends on the the use case for it and what you're what you're wanting to get out of the base if it's for like gaming i would go molded or most of the time just because it's it's quick it's easy you don't have to think a huge amount and if you're kind of rushing at the end of a project or you're getting bored it's mm -hmm. just it's just over and done with um and generally they look pretty good like, yeah. i like that you can batch paint them too yeah yeah whereas if, sorry you go matt yeah so i was just saying, whereas if it's like a display piece like if i was entering like a miniature for golden demon or something obviously i'd make it yeah, myself because they're going to take issue with another company's molded base if it's not their own one well that's why i put molded bases in the gaming category matt and i didn't put them in the display yeah. category so i've got you yeah all right don't worry um although we were talking about making some base toppers so you're wrong they would they would love any company would love to see cult of paint base toppers <laughs> on their miniatures entered into uh, entered into competitions um what's the next slide bud next slide it is ah right you can talk about tufts again now mate i went when you went off on one earlier this is this is all yours andy well my counter argument to your molded bases is that they can take longer because you got to paint what they put on the base yeah which takes bloody ages <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, These, and, uh, we talked about this last week didn't we they're, they're quite extreme some of them now though right mm. like yeah but going back to your uh, point with your Titan, uh, is that there's some amazing products out there mm. that you can just apply, <laughs> and that's quicker than painting a molded base, and they yeah. look great. So for your Titan using uh, the Vallejo mud, which I think is really awesome, I love those things. And um, for me, these tufts from um, uh, what's gamers, it called? Gamers grass. Gamers grass. Now, Gamers Grass, I came across a while back, and they've really upped their game. And uh, the colours are really natural, and they're really matte. And um, I think there's a, like, a, you probably don't have it, but on, on other angles from, like, above, they just look amazing. And uh, all you have to do is stick them on. It's just so cool. And, um, yeah, I, like like I was saying, I think pro there's so many good products for basing mm. that if you you hunt around and you do your research and find the right one, uh, you can actually save tons of time uh, just by using those wicked products. And for my Sylvan F, it was just putting on this mud effect and those fantastic uh, moss tufts you can buy, done. <laughs> and mm. they just looked so good. Um, Gamers Grass is such a good company. They've got such a great range. Yeah, and so many different things I use on more. I pretty much use them exclusively for armies and stuff. They they're really really good. Well, they've upped their game, like I said, because they weren't that good to be honest. And I looked at them a while back, and then I looked at their newer stuff and bought these, and I was surprised at how good they are now because yeah. they're um, the shapes are varied, so they're not just little blobs anymore. And yeah, nice. 
colours. Yeah. Because so. that was always an issue, right? You get you get not just from them, but from a lot of companies, you get the sheet, and like quite a lot of the sheet wasn't really usable either because it was a teeny like four strand tough or yeah. it was this great big one that you had to tear apart that was too big for the base or as yeah. you say yeah it was just like little yeah that's cool man are they the um, that... sorry rich go on. Oh, go on i was just gonna say they're easy to get these gamers grass ones yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. ordered two i've ordered two lot like i found the color i like which was uh dry grass i think and um ordered tons of them and i've got like piles of it now nice. uh but i love it i loved it so much that i'm like yeah i'm just gonna cover my bases it's not gonna be one or two it's you can see a little bit of brown and uh it's actually it's actually just that product made me excited about the whole army because it makes the models look so good mm -hmm. that it encourages me to to finish the whole army because i know the basing is going to be so easy but like look wicked and huge uh, bang for your buck in it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm still still struggling to get through those twenty spearmen, but one day <laughs> you'll get there, mate. You've got it. <laughs> I was going to say, I think one of the biggest problems I think a lot of people find is that finding the manufacturers to begin with. Mm. Like yeah. I've, I until now, I've actually never heard of Gamers Grass. Mm. Um, so like now, I'm going to go actually see what it's what's what because finding grass tufts grass tufts is is quite hard. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the, the barriers I think a lot of people have is finding good materials to start with. Yeah. One of the things that Gamers Grass do, which I really like, is rather than just have like one colour or one thing, they'll do a set. So they'll do like a Highland set, which will have four different colours, oh, nice. four like mini ones. Yeah, so if yeah. you're new at it and you're not really sure what colours the grass would work together and you're a bit unsure of colour coordination, mm. the, the little sets they do are really good because you've got options and they're all different heights and stuff. So that's it's really good. good. Oh, nice. So especially on your bigger bases as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's lovely. I'm going to check these out. We don't have any affiliation to them, by the way. So, in fact, I don't think anyone... But we are open to it. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored available. Grass, because I've got a lot of cows in <laughs> um, Right. Uh, next slide, Matt. This one's for you, Rich. Um, and I suppose me a little bit. I just... Uh, I'm keen on it. You use it a lot. So this is using materials from other things not designed for wargaming so yeah. whether that's scale modeling or railway and i never remember what gauge is it n gauge is that the yeah. railway stuff that works yeah. Yeah. um it, this is such a cool <laughs> <laughs> trash can you did yeah Thanks. yeah, um, yeah so this was you know i do love a sculpted base and uh, this was actually to run along with some sides and guys who were actually on sculpted bases but they didn't make a sculpted base the right size so I decided to make my own mm. um but yeah, this was using um, like scale model, I think 172 scale bricks. It was using metal girders, um, barbed wire, uh, as well as balsa wood that was used from um, like uh, uh, model trains and then cork board that was just from a like a, like a hardware shop. Oh, yeah, for, what, for tarmac. Yeah. Yeah, for tarmac, yeah. Cool. So, you know, the, the scooter bases are cool, but I think once you've got the hang of using other materials i think it's like you said it's really fun to create something mm -hmm. so if you've got a singular vision for it and you want something you know like slightly from my view is it almost like an alternative world war one world war two style wrecked town then i think it's you know you, there's tons of products out there that you can you can use and, and it's really difficult now because obviously we can't go into a shop but i get so excited if i go into like a scale model shop not necessarily a games workshop but like a, an independent some of the little random little gems that you can find mm. are amazing. So the bricks that I that are on there, I found a bag like that. It must have had 2,000 of them in it. Yeah. And it was a couple of quid. And I'm yeah. just right at the bottom now. I've got about 50 of them left. And I'm just being really, like, careful with oh, them. Because I don't want to run out. It's, that's what Salute was all about, man, was finding yeah. that type of thing. It was I miss it a lot. Can't wait yeah. till we can be going to conventions and stuff again, man. Um, yeah, really keen. I'd love to see you do more of that type of stuff. I'm a, I'm really a big random. fan. Yeah, well, after we showed um, the chap last uh, last episode, Sir John, wherever it is, with his weird robot caradrons, like, yeah, super keen. He's done a couple of great videos, actually, on YouTube. Go and check them out. Check them out. Good. Um, quickly, the next slide was about paints and pigments, and I sort of touched on it with the Titan one, and Richard said he's keen on using it as a simple 
way of uh, of getting armies done. Um, I guess the only thing really to touch on with pigments is what's your preferred fixer? I, I mix mine with yeah, I mix mine with water. Right. So I mix it with water, paint it on with a brush. So you make a I mean, pigment if I'm gaming wash. with it. Yeah. yeah, if I'm gaming with it, yeah, because just because you're moving it around, you touch it a lot. But if I was doing a display base and I was using pigments, or if I was doing a higher end thing with pigments, just bash it on with a, a brush, maybe a light varnish to keep it there. Mm. But the the water for me sets it in so you don't knock it off every two minutes, or your carry case suddenly becomes orange. Yeah, yeah. Get with the times, man. Cases are gone. It's all about magnets, right? And I'm really useful oh, boxes yeah, yeah. and magnets now, right? No using pigments in the in the foam push foam things is oh, just crikey. there's there's not a fixer in the world right that is nope. gonna no. keep those if you're gonna use uh I can use attest to that. Like that yeah it never happened to me though i did, did i didn't do any fixer on my ultramarines mm. and it's like 60 models and yeah just put them on with a brush and just work them in mm. i don't go anywhere working them in's a biggie isn't it that's i the think i'm just but and, and again rich is saying there making a wash up is a very efficient way of working them in um, you give it a quick dry brush over. I mean, I'm a fan of of any kind of solvent, really, for fixing pigments. Um, <laughs> so I'll I'll use, you know, maybe the Sansador thinners I use, the mineral you spirits, are by Sansador, or uh, I wish, mate. Um, <laughs> although I don't really. You only have to buy one bottle every couple of years. It lasts friggin' ages. Um, or like X20 Tamiya X20 thinner, which obviously is a bit of, basically just a bit of isopropyl and water. Um, I, find I find that they're, find they're fine. What you saying, Matt? I was just gonna say I find um, I don't fix things too much, but when I do, I use uh, the Vallejo uh, airbrush thinner. Yeah, it just capillaries into everything and just sets it, yeah. and then just maybe a little it varnish to get the work. shine. That's yeah. it, right? That's it. So basically, the take home there is don't buy into the pigment fixer thing. Go in raw. Yeah. <laughs> and Good old next water. slide, yeah. <laughs> <Maybe not. laughs> um. So this is to sort of bridge the gap between uh, gaming bases and display bases. Uh, and also the the sort of... Uh, is this for plinths, Matt, this one? Yeah. Cool. The the wooden sockets. Um, there's... When we, we, and I'll sort of talk about a, a, a topic I wanted to discuss that applies to both the, both the things. Um, this is one of my favourite pieces Andy's done. Thanks, uh, mate. A while back now. It's just a couple of the Warcry, Warband, Corvus, Cabal... Um, and I thought this was when I thought about this segment, this was one of the models I had in mind that I wanted to sort of show. And I guess I just wanted you to talk a little bit around why you might choose a natural wood plinth over a black plinth. Mm. Um, and then perhaps how you've gone about incorporating the plinth into the scene. Mm. Yeah. Um the plinth is from Manual from uh, crazywenky.de. I thought I'd give him a shout out. Um, I bought like 20 plinths off him. I just said, give me some crazy ones. This is olive wood, I think. And I love olive wood. Um, for the colour, uh, you can see the the kind of bit in the middle. Uh, it's just awesome um, and so, so fun. So that's uh, just, there's nothing on that wood that's showing there inside. That's just... No painting, no. Right, right. So the only the only bit that's painted on the plinth is the the very top. Mm. Um, but yeah, I bought loads of plinths off him. I've still got a couple left. Um, and he's I think he's just sort of stopped his normal job and he's doing this plinth company full time. So if Ooh. you like these plinths, go check him out. He's a super nice guy, uh, really nice in the community. And uh, yeah, you can just get some wicked plinths off him. So yeah, we'll put the link in the description. But it's yeah. crazywanky.de and yeah i might i might get some more of him uh but yeah i i got these corvus cabal and uh i've wanted to do something and i was like i don't want to just do one i don't want to do the whole unit and i had this idea for a little vignette and um yeah I, I always buy i buy these plimps before the models actually so i'm always looking for an excuse to use the plinth mm. and uh mm. i just thought man this will work so well for a for a desert and i just fluked it that um the kneeling one fitted on that little outcrop you know it's obviously like there's a chunk missing and it just it just worked together but um i guess because it was like a desert theme i was going for that the the wood kind of looks a bit like rock mm. um so it just blended in quite nicely and 
on the top is just like you said, Henry, some GW texture paint, right? And then some powders. So the the actual the painting of the base is basically nothing, but um, you've got a few sticks and a few skulls on it. So very very simple painting, but um, yeah, I think the plinth really helps for the whole piece, I guess, mm. which is kind of cool, right? Yeah, and I, I guess it's and maybe this is too too broad a question or whatever, but you're saying was it literally a case of I want to use this plinth? What can I do to make it work? Right, rather than I want to do this model as a display piece, what plinth will it work on? Like a bit of both. Because like I bought all these nice plinths and there's some like this one that are so nice, like the grain in it's cool and the chunk missing's great. And you're like, I want to do a project because this plinth is gorgeous, but mm. what's it going to be? And gotcha. then I was like, and then I was like, okay, I need, a, I need a plinth for these Corvus Cabal. And I was like, I reckon they'll work on that with a desert. So it's both really nice. But I have bought plinths, which are so gorgeous of like, what can go on this? And there's there's this one little plinth which has got my Nurgle uh, model on it now, but I think it had about five models on it before, <laughs> and I never painted the model, but I, was, I wanted to use the plinth. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, def I think if it was a black plinth, it wouldn't be the same for me. Mm, mm, it kind of mm. it kind of makes it, which is which is really fun. So, yeah, I really like. Don't get me wrong, I love the clean effect of a black plinth. Mm. um it's 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 basically like painting the rim of the base right which actually we haven't discussed at all because you should all be painting them black um <laughs> but uh all i guess that's green. that's it that's it well that's true all goblin green um was very remiss of us we haven't actually got a slide of a sawdust goblin green base in here that's um the next one but i think myself. i yeah <laughs> i think i i love the natural wood ones mm. there's something about it i it's that you know, in, in the past, like very, very occasionally, you'd, you'd be reading a white dwarf and they do like an army shot or a, a, a stage shot for an article and they would use natural material in it, mm. um, like to, like sandy outcrops or, or things like that. And there's just something I just I love seeing painted models in the completely natural product setting if that makes sense it's all about the model um, isn't it just so juxtaposition what yeah works, just, right yeah definitely i think fantasy yeah it's all about presentation and so your presentation's got to match the model so sometimes if you're doing like a clean sh a space room i think they just suit that black because it's just like you know mm. that 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 clean presentation but then uh with a fantasy model maybe there's more natural elements work. yeah true i hadn't thought of it like that and I guess generally I gravitate towards fantasy stuff. Mm. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Dan and Daniel in the chat, they're both uh, just confirming that they've helped my Sandstore commission. Um, <laughs> both buying it based on recommendations. Thanks very much, chaps. That will <laughs> keep the lights on for the day. Um, so, Matt, let's move on to the next slide, if we can, bud. All right. So the last plinth. As you said, Andy, you, you you literally basically did nothing to it except a bit of texture at the top. And uh, there was a little log on there, which I assume was a twig. I'm all about the little um, log. Right. <laughs> and, and it's done. Whereas here you've had to take a, a completely artificial black plinth and sculpt the detail, right? Mm hmm So what's your, and this can just be a really nice broad, like top three things or whatever you like. What are your go-tos for creating your classic, your your rocks, your your branches, your things like that. As Rich has already mentioned, you know, scale model kits are fantastic for your a lot of your sci-fi stuff. There's some decent stuff, for fantasy, some etch brass type things. Uh, but what are your go-to's? It's all about stuff you find for free outside. And that's that's a later slide, mate. This and, is... mi and Millie, Putt. <laughs> and, and Millie, Putt. Putt. there we go. But yeah, but gr green stuff's no good because it's a bit soft, so it's good for sculpting, but if you're doing something like rock, uh, on this one, there's um, uh, Milliput in the yellow and Magic Sculpt in the light grey. Uh, and uh, I just added to this every time I had some putty left over. <laughs> just <laughs> rolled, rolled some balls and gradually added to it over a couple months. Um, but that's really great for your rocks because it's really rock solid. 
um, it's so hard when it's dry. So you can actually carve it with a knife and get sharp edges for rock. Uh, you can even snap it and roll it out and you get a natural grain. Um, so yeah, if you haven't used milliput before, I know a lot of people um, use green stuff because it's kind of what's uh, been used mostly by people and in Games Workshop, but uh, milliput's a very cheap, fantastic product. And, and that's the basic milliput, right? Is it milliput grey, is it called? Uh, standard, but standard, it, doesn't yeah. make, it doesn't make a huge difference for us as model makers. So you can get extra fine, fine, or right. all that. Um, I think the standard's just the cheapest. It's It's fine. Um, but yeah, it doesn't make a difference, but it's crazy versatile for basing. Mm. Um, and I've sculpted out of magic sculpt, some of those roots as well. So same thing for rocks and roots, but yeah, it's the way it dries, I guess it's harder. So it's more suitable for basing material and stuff like that. Nice, lovely stuff. Um, create the next slide, please, Matt. This feels like a, like a school presentation doesn't it need one of those overhead projectors <laughs> whatever next slide um, <laughs> yeah well this brings back the memories right so this is to do with what you touched on then natural materials mm. um and i know we often joke about you know but off into the woods to get this but i think you and rich went on a little uh <laughs> covid compliant walk a while back um on a little sort of base material gathering trip right yeah we had a few it unsuccessful works. ones <laughs> i mean partly because your poor neighbor's front garden is now completely devoid <laughs> of any slate bark. and or bark and or ad, slate obviously now. going down the playgrounds to nick the bark had a whole host of other issues associated with it so what's yeah, yeah what's been going on uh th this one's cool this is really old and um yeah it's cool to look at it like this but uh this was actually like finding out what's the best products. So uh, there's plastic leaves, paper leaves, metal leaves, uh, real bark, uh, real trees, sculpted bits. So it was a real exploration um, into uh, like, yeah, different, different stuff. Um, but yeah, try to think what the original question was. Where do we get the stuff from? Just, just free, just the, the freebies, really. And I guess this, this for Matt as well, because you know, of the of the four of us, you two have certainly attended the most um, mm. uh, competitions. You know, so you're gonna you'd be exposed to this type of thing. Like, is it is it very commonplace? You know, it's this is to me, this is quite a long way away from a gaming base. You know, I know, Andy, you're saying you're keen to use a lot of natural materials for your gaming bases, but generally we don't tend to see that. We tend to see whatever's been put on there, even if it is natural. So I would use soil a lot. Um, yeah, I went on a class with David Soper years ago and he talked about going and getting soil. So my poor pot plant in my house, that was it. Scoop it out, put it in the oven, stink the yeah. house out. Wife really upset. But you end up with this fantastic variety of material. But I would still paint over it. Mm. I wouldn't just leave it sort of as is. Is it quite common to see? And I, and I know you've painted elements of this, but is it quite common to see that the guys using, you know, guys and girls using the natural products for their basing? I think most people paint sand, which is fine. Um, but and like, if you kind of just put it on and dry brush it, that looks great for armies, but it's not quite good enough i think for a display mini and it can kind of take you out of it um mm. this is like really broken up bits of bark that's kind of so so fine that it looks like uh mud i guess um and not painted at all you can kind of like airbrush it to tint it and stuff so you could get it a bit darker and things like that i've done that um but yeah the the twigs are painted but the actual the ground scatter is is not painted, and I think it's better for it. Um, and just tons of variety, I guess, is what makes it look cool, like a real forest floor. So yeah, uh, if you can have fun and, and play with different bits and bobs for sure. If you're looking for the you know, for realistic, you're not going to get any more realistic than the real thing. I think. But sometimes <laughs> that, that variety is that natural variety that you would get in it. I think it's really difficult to replicate, and sometimes you don't need to. Sometimes you can go and find it yourself, like. You were just saying about me and Andy nipping out and trying to find bits. Like it's something I started doing not too long ago, but just experimenting with different things. So, like you said about grabbing a bit of dirt. So my my go to is old coffee grounds 
mix 50 50 with compost that's been sieved and put mm -hmm. mix that together put it in the oven for an hour and then sprinkle that on top but that i would use neat not paint it you can maybe wash it or use a um enamel or something like that on top of it and um, some of the I like quite a lot of the uh, like 135 scale realistic World War II style dioramas. And a lot of that is a mix of both. They've got painted detail on there and then they'll mm. sprinkle sand on there that's just glued in place. So it looks more realistic. Just I think it depends on what it is you, you want to achieve with it. Do you think Do you think there's an issue with, or not an issue, but do you think the scale affects it too? So in the sense yeah. of, you're saying yeah. there, Rich, it's, you know, if you use those natural products, they give you a nice variety of size and shapes, but you're yeah. still often painting them whereas yeah. do you think when you were doing these larger scale miniatures you can get away with not painting them 100 percent, because the mm. scale's a lot closer you know if you've if you're shrinking it down and you're looking and you put sometimes even just the the, the how fine the sand is you would glue to a gaming base in reality if you're looking at it, some of those grains of sand would be like yeah. little footballs <laughs> yeah you know because they're not fine enough from that sort of distance or that sort of size it should almost be almost flat yeah, and you wouldn't really necessarily see the, the the difference in in scale. I think with the what with the biggest of one thirty five, that kind of area, I think it's easier to get away with because you do have a bit more size to play with, and mm. it, it is a bit easier. Um, but that's why you you would modify a little bit. So rather than just getting dirt out of the garden, there'll be massive bits in there which wouldn't work on like a twenty eight mil game base. But I I put mine through a really really thin, really really small sieve. And sip out all the big bits so that you've still got the same color and consistency. It's just a bit of a fine, mm. bit finer grain. But yeah, it's really cool, it, man. Yeah, it is. It is hard though. The scale, I think, is difficult. The more you use realistic things from the outside world, the more you have to think about whether it would be still be that size or how mm. you can modify it to be smaller. So, like the case in point is, if you get a full size leaf, obviously that's going to be not going to work. But you've seen the leaf cutters that you get. Yeah. So you take an actual leaf and then you just get like a punch and you just yeah. punch leaf size bits out of real leaves. Nice. Our um one of our good hobby friends, Betsy, uh sent me a, a message not so long ago, which was like a flipping Gordon Ramsay recipe for his latest base mix. <laughs> and it was just like you're saying, it was like, okay, one part coffee grind to three parts uh, dry yeah. basil to you know this and he was like <laughs> and fair play, it looked fantastic. Um and again it's it can be put straight on and you're good to go. Tea um, leaves. Tea leaves are a good one. They give a nice smell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. It, um, was it oregano people would use a lot? And, and yeah. you know, the base is smelling like pizza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before, um, what was it, spring last lockdown or whatever it was? Mm. Whatever that was years ago now. Uh, I, I was trying to get loads of basic material for like leaf type stuff to like scatter, like forest scatter. Mm. So there's a massive oak tree down the end of the road so when all the leaves were falling off got bin bag full of it <laughs> put it in a uh like baking tray baked it for a couple of hours and um then just crunched it all up because it just falls apart nice. and you, yeah. you can really make it very like fine it's a great way to get loads of free scatter it's really nice. good fun as well yeah it is right gets That's you outside point. as well which is good yeah. <laughs> stinks yeah. the house out though oh so much yeah yeah, dirt so in the much. oven. Make sure you yes. get permission for dirt in the yeah. oven because that really does not smell <laughs> nice. Well, we were getting it replaced, so it was okay. There we go. You just commit and buy a hobby oven. Yeah, get a, <laughs> a little easy bake. Yeah, um, we've had a couple of questions uh, in the chat. Uh, Steph or comments. Stefan's saying he's found that coconut fiber that he's bought in Poundland yep. works really nice for basic. Yeah, you can imagine that. Um, and yeah. Nigel's asked, "How did you fix the bark?" I presume he means like glue it to the base uh um, pva pva right yeah and any any reason not pva not super glue because like? uh, you can't basically cover it so there's going to be gaps and if it's like yeah another you know you want that translucent mm. adhesive really um and and layer it up and stuff like that but yeah not super glue um yeah just in pva in a, a couple of layers you know, try, i tried hairspray it wasn't strong enough so mm. Nice one. There's, there's a great um, thing you can buy. I think AK do it and a couple of other companies do it where it is um, it's super, super thin adhesive. So rather than putting the glue on first and adding the sand, in a way to get the sand or whatever it is look more natural, you add it on first, brush it around so it's really like neat, and then you mm. just drop the oh, yeah. glue over the top yeah, and yeah. it just seeps through and seals it. It's like it. the old PVA water yeah. spritzer thing, right? 
yeah, yeah. awards yeah. and things. Nice. If, um, if, Matt, let's all start. I was just going to say, like, if if you're you, what you can do is you can set out all the stuff you want in the way you want it, and then you can spritz it with isopropyl, and then spritz mm -hmm. it with um, PVA mix because the yeah. the isopropyl just breaks up that tension and just mm -hmm. seeps into it. Nice. Nice. Look at that surface tension. Good tips. Love it. Yeah. Wow. Science. Now that's really it's really, really interesting. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, enjoying this in the chat. Oh, sycamore seed pods. Yeah, they're a classic mini mini yeah. leaf. Aren't they? Um so the last uh, slide I wanted to talk about uh, with this, sort of bring it to a close, was uh, snow and ice which are ones we get asked a lot. Guys, if you're um, interested in basing, there's obviously a lot of very good tutorials out there. Andy often does some fantastic ones on the Patreon um, to do with, you know, his latest display pieces. So if you are keen to sort of look at some real step-by-steps, and I've seen a few of the guys in the chat are saying, oh, I, I tried that, the one we've just showing here for um, for my armies and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big part of the, the hobby game now. So yeah, check it out if you uh, you wanna wanna up that. Um, but yeah, the last thing, uh, snow and ice, really. Um, I know this is something, Andy, you've experimented with a lot over the last few years, trying to find your favourite. Mm. Um, so I guess in brief, what is it and why? Uh, precision ice and snow dot co dot uk or com. The link will be in the I'll description. Sort that <laughs> It's and just the best. Link I've got to go and find right where are you? It's just the best snow product, I think. Um, there are some disadvantages though. So uh, you can only really do it on a big base uh, and kind of not on the model. But the reason it's so good is that you sieve it uh, kind oh, of. Oh wow! Like, right. So you have to use a sieve, um, and it comes with a fantastic sieve in the set, but it's like that big. So it would cover a 60 mil base in one tap. Uh, I ended up taping it with a little hole in it. So it's great, but it will obliterate what's on your, your base. But but for this this one, it was perfect because, um, yeah, I wanted the whole thing covered. And it's definitely the best, most natural uh, looking one. Maybe not suitable for gaming stuff, but for display stuff, it's just incredible. Uh, and you build up layers with hairspray and you can spray the hairspray from the direction uh, as if it's wind. So like on the tree, you spray the hairspray from the wind direction and then it just sticks on one side and it's just great. And and just like um, what we were saying earlier about the powders for the gaming base, you just bosh on a color and it makes your gaming model mm -hmm. uh, pop. Um, this model is obviously pretty much black and so that white against it is just... Yeah. Uh, pretty awesome um see so yeah, i've done a couple bases with this snow and it's just made it really a bit like i was saying with the grass uh it just it just can make the model because it tells you where it is gives you a mm. feeling uh adds a color um yeah super cool and there's there's loads of other snow products um i've liked i actually used to like the gw one a lot well i was going to say for, for gaming models that gw one's fantastic i mean it's because really it's basically just millions of microbeads so it's i mean it's awful yeah. but it's very effective um <laughs> for, for, for game ones it's funny rich mentioned it earlier but you can see that recent day guard elf can't you on that shelf behind you well you can't see him but you can see his snow base there is like you can see him a mile off lovely bright, stuff right snow yeah really really <laughs> nice lovely. okay guys so that's sort of the end of the the basing chat i wanted to have i hope uh it's been fun i didn't prep these guys at all for this i just wanted to get their sort of reactions to things i did um but i hope uh those of you in the chat are enjoying it and those of you that watch this back have enjoyed it and as i said at the top let me know or let us know if there's there's bits that you'd like us to perhaps focus on in more detail in the future um pretty pictures are important one of the reasons we're not a podcast and we're trying to keep it on youtube so what i did ask everyone for was an example of some of their favorite basing by hobbyists around the world um so i don't know what order this one's in so whack it up matt and we'll um we'll see who's who oh <laughs> yeah so yeah mr colwell uh 
it's an amazing bass. Um, mm. The the confidence on the resin I admire. <laughs> 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 the commitment to to actually pouring that is um yeah brave. Yeah, man. Mind you, could get away with bubbles. Yeah. Because you could say it was yeah the water. I'll be worried so about it bubbles. clouding. It's the leaks, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did uh, as part of the Day of God Kickstarter. We did a, an interview with Dave, which is still on the YouTube channel. If you go back, it's not all polished. I say polished. It's not as polished as this uh, we're doing now. But it's a fantastic interview with him. Or you know, David was a fantastic uh, guest, uh, and he talks about this base in a lot of detail, doesn't he? Like scavenging for bits on the pavement and little little real plants. Most of it's real, right? He's just covered it in resin. <laughs> yeah um, he was he was saying it has to be like if you do it you have to go for it and have tons of variety mm -hmm. and that's kind of the same with the woodland base you showed is that yeah you, if you if you're gonna do it you have to really go for it and just get all these different colors and then it and then it works i think i mean it's so busy uh with different life in there mm -hmm. and uh and that's why it works i think um and there's something about those blocks of see-through resin that is just nice, and it goes back. <laughs> to, it goes back to when the natural wood plinth you showed. It's mm. present. It's all presentation, isn't it? And a big, transparent bit of resin just looks nice. A, a wooden plinth looks nice. Um, it just, yeah, basing is is so important, isn't it? And it yeah. can change how you feel about a model massively, mm. massively. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Great pick. Next up. Great pick. Ah, this one's mine. Cat, obviously. Um, <laughs> Roman Lepat is probably my hobby hero. Um, I just like everything he does and his attitude to all of the hobby. But he, I, it was a struggle to pick one. Um, if you want to go and look at tons of ridiculous bases, <laughs> go on his Instagram. Uh, again i will link all of these things in the description um it, it, the the scenes he's able to create the atmosphere he's able to create um it, it, it is madness um you know he's obviously done the famous gw pieces the um last blood, light. blood danger yeah, the last light and all that um but he's also just done these and last year was it last year or maybe 2019 no it was last year he did the little tiny astronaut project yeah um, and those oh, yeah. those are what I was initially going to put up, but so many of them are videos, not um, stills. So I ended up with cats, uh, and I just noticed a cat's butthole, which I didn't realise um, <laughs> was on there. But I there did. Go. Till then, so that's <laughs> but that's yeah. attention attention to detail. Um, but yeah, he's I just yeah, it's just cool, man. Um, he he gets it. I think one of the things he'll often talk about is atmosphere, and I. I You've talked about presentation, Andy, and I think sort of there's crossover right between those two terms um, in, in what we're talking about. But yeah, if you want a nice bit of bass porn, go check out Roman stuff. Mm. And massive voodoo as well. Yes. As well as Instagram. Yeah. Massive voodoo. Massive spot. voodoo blog spot. Yeah. He has. One of the best tutorials, right? Yeah. For basing. Yes. Hands down. It's got me back in the hobby. So many mm. tutorials on that website, and he really goes into detail on everything. It's, it's brilliant. Such a good hobby resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, next up, <laughs> vegetation. Look at that. That's so, some tough action. Though. Yeah. Um, wow. It was hard to pick one from Oliver. Uh, he has some insane bases. I don't know how he really comes up with them half the time. Um, I'll have to get on one of his courses at some point. Um, <laughs> But I just I I think this ties in nicely with trying to get like the, the on the tough piece because there is so much mm -hmm. variation in that and it's obviously not coming off just one sheet. Um, there is one yeah there are there are tons of products in there and it's bringing it all all together really well mm -hmm. and just sort of making it look natural. But um, you have to go for it like, like yeah. I said like it's not like well put a couple on and then it looks weird. But if you go all in, yeah. like Dave's uh, base, mm. then uh, it's convincing, I think. I think it's unconvincing if you maybe hold back, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's just so natural. that, that uh, I just couldn't get over how, how natural it looked to me, and that was uh, 
Yeah, it's brilliant. Awesome. I want to do like a red wall type model now on that type of base after talk what we talked about <laughs> earlier. Let's go and get a Burroughs and Badgers get... model or something. I'm going to have to dig those books out again. Cause... Oh, mate, I got one for my wife recently. She'd never read them. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's too, it's too cool. Someone surely must have picked up that license. For sure, I know Amazon and Amazon are doing yeah. a are doing a series of it now, aren't they? And Amazon are, are doing an, an animation series. Yeah. Give um, them an email. Yeah, I'll bang an email off to them. Right. Get, get, get Bezos on it. License. There we are. Right. Here we go. Um, yeah, lovely. Oliver's, I think, renowned. Basically, there's tons of people. Obviously, we're going to have missed out on this as well. Um, but uh, yeah, what was the last pick? Uh, it's two more. Oh, two more. What a That's treat! It. This is me. Oh, cool. So I picked this because when I was thinking of really good bases, I did, similar to the ones that we've seen, I wanted ones that really kind of blew my mind or there was tons of stuff going on and the atmosphere was amazing. And then I remembered this one and I loved it because it's so different. Mm. It's literally just a black painted base with some very, very nice tufts placed very well and that's it. And it... I love it. it <laughs> a lot yeah, of thought in I that placement, it. in there. Yeah. yeah. I love mm. it. It's so different. It's so simple. Uh, it adds something to the model without completely overshadowing it. Um, I think it's great, and that's why it's my pick. It's Presentation great, again, isn't it? Cool it's model, black too. and green, which is like so strong. It's got mm. black, yeah. green, and uh, it's a real statement, isn't it? And mm, yeah, uh, yeah it's, and what, it's cool. And what a model! What a conversion! Yeah, hell of a conversion. Amazing. Very nice. nice. And it's a cool idea that straight on the plastic. Well, so that, that, that's what kind of shocked me when you sent it over, Rich. Was it's like, oh, it's yep. it's just straight onto like mm. a base, but it works. Yeah, but who doesn't <laughs> like different. it? I think it looks. I love it. The <laughs> thing is, it doesn't look lazy, right? No, it's incredibly simple, but it doesn't look lazy at all. Yeah, presentation like, choice, right? I think one of the traps you can fall into with basing is that more is better. Mm. It's not always the case. I do think depending on what the, the topic is, you know, more attention to detail can be good. But I think this is really a good example of sometimes just simple can work really, really well. Mm. That's a hell of a good is, did, did, Why do I recognize that name? Was this your pick at the top of the show as well, this guy? So this is a bit, I'm not 100% if it was Nicholas himself who converted this. Right. So I will double, yeah, I will, I will double check it. Um, that's but, a great yeah, Instagram. I'm going to enjoy that. Yeah, Nicholas that. has got an incredible intro. But he, like, we'll find the correct one and put it in the link if we haven't for this because cool. it's a um, great job. Nice one. And final one. So who's been, who's been greedy then? <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't really talk about basing, could we, without uh, bringing Joshua up either? Um, yeah, just... <laughs> I mean, the chair is there's basically just a base, right? It's not. He, he, it's what he does. A model, right? right? Yeah. His 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 projects are basically yeah. like bases. Uh, actually, yeah. this one's got two miniatures in, but the chair is really emotive, isn't it? And mm. uh, it's some butterflies on a thing, and you, it just makes you. You can probably think everyone's probably thinking of their own different story, but it makes you think of stuff, which is what bases are for, right? Mm. Um, and actually, out of those three, that's my favourite one, and it's. Yeah got no miniatures on it unless you count the butterflies as miniatures then it's got uh seven <laughs> loads <laughs> cool. yeah. Skir skirmish warband yeah yeah <laughs> what's insane about it is the scale i mean that's tiny because that's yeah. a finger <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah brilliant not big i'd love to see them all i'd love to see all of his bases mm. like a museum thing like just every single mini scene i think that the mainstream public would enjoy looking at that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's well, miniature art, isn't it? Yeah, so what, what what we talked about way back on episode one, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, very very cool. And he's on massive voodoo as well, so you got mm -hmm. Roman and him. It's just a mm. powerhouse. So it really is awesome. It really is lovely stuff. Well, that I believe is it for basing. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Let's move on to the final section of the show. So as always, we're going to take a look at what people have been putting up using the hashtag paint cultist. I'm saying this every episode now, but there's 
more and more and more. There's hundreds and hundreds of things on there now. So picking just a handful to show at the end of a show is becoming increasingly difficult. So please don't be mad at me. I thoroughly enjoy looking at them all. Um, go and follow this hashtag if you use Instagram. Um, it is such a breadth of hobbyists, such a breadth of, of projects that people and miniatures that people have chosen to do. Um, a great source of inspiration for me, certainly. I am only going to show stuff that's not whips. By all means, tag your whips. But um, I'm just going to show <laughs> show uh, com completed work. So let's go. First slide. Oh, awesome. Uh, Raptor yeah. Imperialis. This is our buddy Kieran from Down Under. Um, way back when Heresy was first kicking off, uh, Kieran did a project. Uh, Kiz Dugs, I think, might have been his forum name. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And he did a conversion of one of each of the Space Marine Legions. Uh, just a, a normal troop from each one. And it was a real, you know, it, it's quite a, a, a close scene, the heresy scene. And uh, it was a real thing. And we, we were over there in Oz, and I was lucky enough to see them in, in person, just on the shelf all together. And they were, just, they were just lovely. And then his painting, he's part of this super strong Melbourne group I talked about a while ago. Um, and he's now starting to, to revisit a few more characters. Um, I actually think his photography is top notch as well in this picture. How? Um, you know, it's just uh, it's just a great model. Mm. Just love it. Just Spear and cool. shield as well. Yeah. LD is pretty cool. Yeah. <coughs> right it's very refined. Yeah. Very refined damage. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just lots of thought. It's just it's, it's he's always had a knack for it. It resonates with me his work a lot. Like I can imme I immediately get it. Like it, that's what when I'm reading the stories, and I'm thinking about what they would look like if I made it as a miniature. That's what Kieran does. I think that's why I enjoy what uh, seeing his work so much. Um, so yeah. Nice one, dude. Spot There's on. tons, tons more on his Instagram, so go and check it out. I like his Emp's children. No, that I couldn't decide between this one, yeah, and his and his Emperor's children uh, for his recent one. He did tag them both, so go and check them out. <laughs> um, okay, what we got next? Ah, this is what I was talking about. There's a, there's a, for some reason, in the last two weeks, there's been a real variety of stuff going up now on the hashtag. Um, I'm not familiar with the model. I don't know if you are, Andy. Yeah, so this is Matt's company. Uh, Matt's a really nice guy, uh, friends with me and Jamie. We see him at Monte Santavino. Uh, and he actually came, um, he lives in Italy now, but he came to the Australian course with Mark. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, you'll, you'll remember him. But yeah, uh, really, really nice guy. Um, and uh, yeah, check out his Instagram and uh, you can buy this bust from him. Oh, nice one. He's got a few, he had a few really cool ones to choose from um on uh that he tagged but i felt this was uh it just jumped out you know um very cool a lot very of color right yeah. yeah very cool colors and i really like the chest plate like i like yeah, all that's that the bit i like know? yeah For obvious reasons it's the colors of dreams just yes yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> but no nah, really 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 nice um yeah nice one matt what's up uh other matt what's up next <laughs> ah Ooh. yeah um this was just i mean i'm i'm a massive fan of the Warcry ranger miniatures anyway i'm building my gaming army around them um i'm also a massive fan of seeing different takes on skins uh, across models and this is just cool i've just not seen anything like it before um it kind of seems so obvious like why <laughs> why haven't we seen more of this style with these uh the 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 untamed beasts or whatever they are um, but I love it, and I love the little details on the uh, cloak on the one on the left as well. Oh, yeah, that's mental. That's perfect um, one for a basing episode as well. They're great bases. I'm not going to lie, that did help it nudging. <laughs> <laughs> make the cut. Full, yeah, full transparency. No, nah, I don't think of it like make the cut. We could do shows and shows just talking about other people's models, but I'm not sure you just want to listen to us all going, that's awesome. That's cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> The recesses in the muscle folds are like having that as a different colour is really nice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very striking, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Really, really dig it. Really dig it. It's a nice one. Um, I think we've got a couple more. Uh, should be two more. 
Ah. Ooh. So this, uh, not the typical type of model I would associate with this. Um, what's the word? Instagram account. Um, so yeah, really, really nice to see people painting busts and large scale miniatures more. Uh, again, I'm not familiar with the model. I'm afraid I'm not brilliant when it comes to large scale stuff. Um, but yeah, just a really nice take. And, and again, some some really lovely areas of detail on it. Um, you know, the stomach, the chest, the face, I think the skin. To me, it looks like the person who's painted this has gone, I really want to work on painting skin. You know? Mm. Um, so it's come out, yeah, it's come out nice. And it's an elf, right? So you've got to be happy, Andy. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The staff's too evil for me. I only like goodies. Remember, oh, there's a baddie. Oh, that's yeah. true. Isn't it? Yeah, I like that's happy true. elves. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Oh. Treat, treat, treat peoples. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nice one. And then the final one, I think, really grabs. Ah, there's cool. a bunch of photos of this one. I thought Rich would dig this one quite a lot. Um, Very cool. This is a few of those Gene Steeler cult models. I really fancy picking up and painting just to paint. Yeah, um, I think they're really, they're really class, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think I think it would. Just a bit more, it's a bit different, but you could still yeah. still use a lot of your, your techniques. Oh, maybe I'll do. Yeah, fuck it. Maybe we'll pick one up and do one for Patreon next. <laughs> um, they're um, they're not as big as you think. They're actually quite small, mm, mm. but they're great little models. I picked one up as a potential uh, GD entry. I thought I felt like I'm jump back cool. on that bad wagon. Um, but yeah, great models, and that's a really good job. Lovely colours, the blue and orange, what a mix. Oh yeah, that blue grey plus orange. Yes. Yeah. The holy sci fi colour scheme. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and again, one of the things that I really liked about it was the basing. Um yeah. actually there's another angle, I'm not sure if Matt's got it, where it's obviously almost the opposite angle yeah. to this one. Um it, it's, it's, there's it's quite a rake on that bit of uh, rusty old highway. Um, some nice rust just, effect as well you know yeah really nice yeah. and uh, and again showing that using uh not typical gw style stuff mm. for to base a gw miniature with um Very so yeah cool. i was a big fan of that um so yeah guys i i'm like i say check out that hashtag there's some really wonderful things on there and we do look through them all um and we do really really enjoy it so please keep it going it certainly took off a lot more than i expected it to um, which is which is really really fun um as ever if you want to reach out to us at all if you want to talk about topics maybe we could cover in in future shows or you've got projects you'd like to like to talk to us about um you can reach us everywhere patreon youtube instagram twitter whatever it's not hard to get hold of us okay um and do reach out to us if you've enjoyed the episode pop in the comments what you've enjoyed about it we're getting to that stage now where what's this episode five six something like that five loads you know we're feeling we're feeling a bit more chill we're feeling a bit more confident about it all but we want to know what you guys are enjoying about it so that we can focus on that more you know there might be something we're patting ourselves on the back for saying how wonderful it was and you lot thought it was fucking boring so let us know <laughs> <laughs> um about that's that sort of thing all right because uh, that's why we're doing it kind of thing but rich andy matt thank you very much for joining us this evening i really enjoyed i'm going to properly listen back to this episode as well not just to check for any sound issues um yeah enjoyed that it's going to be a fun a fun evening finding all the links as well the umpteen right. things people have brought up but we can get <laughs> it done um thanks patreon chat that have been watching along and commenting along it's always fun. Keeps us on our toes. Um, you've been a chatty bunch tonight as well, which is nice to see. Don't worry, Brendan, if you missed the start, you'll be able to watch this back straight away um, before it goes out to everybody on the weekend. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, again, thanks ever so much. Pop a comment. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. And with that, I think we'll sign off. Uh, thanks again, chaps. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, take care. See you next time. Uh,